Oh, wonderful. Uh, first and foremost, I don't know what it is with the guests of the show today, but you are trying to outdo me with your hairstyles. <laughs> well, I figured I had to keep up with you. I see that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's almost a high top and an afro all in one. It's like Mayor Pam Iorio's haircut and my haircut right on your head. <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> I like that, it. I know I like it though. But, well, you know what? I figured I would try to keep up with you. Okay. Okay. I so like that. I figured that. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. You look great too. Wonderful. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk. You have a production sure. company and you also have a television show. I do. And it's called Just Teens. Absolutely. Which one would you like to talk about first? Well, let's talk about the production company okay. and why Teen Time Productions was started. In 1999, uh, General Colin Powell made a call to America, mm -hmm. uh, America's Promise, to leave no child left behind. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I was living in Chicago, working for the number one radio station at that time. Steve Harvey was our headliner. And I started doing a lot of projects with Athletes Against Drugs and got this blueprint in my mind one day and I said you know what if I want to make a difference I want to do something in programming because there was not enough positive television programming um, on TV for teens so Chicago was too big at that time so I went back to my home market of Louisville mm -hmm. and uh, put a blueprint together or should I say the business plan together and got a few good sponsors and uh, pitched the idea to the cable outlet and mm -hmm. so Teen Time was born okay. and so um, very much needed you know in that region of Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky and Chicago, Illinois those areas and so about four years ago we had the vision to come here to Florida and keep moving with the programming because there's not enough positive programming on TV for teens mm -hmm. um, targeting the age group between 12 to 19 years old and a multicultural, multi-diverse group of programming that encompasses all children, not just African-American, not just Anglo-Saxon, not just Latina, but everyone's culture. Mm. So paint a picture of, what, of this television show. You're the host, right? I, I am the executive producer and host. Okay, so you have, is it like a talk show? Well, what is happening right now in Pinellas County is we have produced some other shows that the content was very rele relevant to what is happening to the lives of kids today. Mm -hmm. So we are sharing those programs with them to put like an entree out there so the Tampa Bay market can see what does teen time programming look like. 30 minute show does the three E's, educate, encourage, and empower the youth of today to be the leaders of today and tomorrow. Um, we feel like in television programming for teens that if teens have a extended vocabulary then um, they become more wholesome citizens in society they sound sharp they look good corporate america wants to partner with them so we have what we call the word wizard so if we had a word like epidemiology we break it down for them mm -hmm. the parts of speech teach them how to use it in a sentence what does the word mean wow. you know what does the word mean and then the history hitter and there again, we like to teach young people about sure. all history. You just have to be a teen to be a part of it. I can use that class right <laughs> now. <laughs> Some no. big words. No. Epidemiology. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it's the study, I, I think the epidemiology, the study of earth and, and diseases and okay. things like that. So it's called epidemiologist. So they study diseases. Okay. And so a lot of what's happening in this world today, everybody's going green, but epidemiology has helped the world to go green. <laughs> but these kids need to know that. No, and the programming encompasses the life of everyone that's in the life of a teenager. So it could be the parent, the guardian, uh, guardian at litems, it could be the teachers, the teacher's assistant, law enforcement. Everyone that's involved in a young person's life watches the program. Okay, mm -hmm. so how is it doing for you in the Tampa Bay area? Well, in the Pinellas area? I, I think it's doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, always when you have a nonprofit, there's always that challenge of getting the proper sponsorship and funding, but keeping the name out there and, and this little face inside this clock and this little Teen Time logo, mm -hmm. everybody's like, what's that, Teen mm -hmm. Time? So um, it has its own ring to it, but um, it's doing what it's supposed to do, the three E's, educate, encourage, and empower. And you're a motivational speaker, mm -hmm. and what do you normally motivate people about? 
You know, I think I can take a message and turn it into whatever it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Most times I listen to a corporation's theme or if a church group or civic group is having some sort of glee club meeting or women's tea and they want somebody to come and stir the house up, I just ask them what you want to stir it up about <laughs> and then we get to stir it up. Oh, so it's just okay. kind of one of those things. But I think the most important thing is I think people in corporate America charismatic structures, political structures, have weak hand claps. And so we go in with our seminars and anytime I take the stage, I love jazz music, so I always have something rocking in the jazz zone. And I just get these people up for 30 seconds to 60 seconds and just clap and cheer for themselves. Like, woo -hoo. they get involved with it and it releases stress the pheromones in their brain so that they can absorb what I'm going to pour into them being the motivational speaker. Now, if I can't do it in 30 seconds to three minutes, I don't need to be on the stage. <laughs> so that is my timeline that I give myself. If I can't get the crowd moving and wrapped where I need them to be so we can go forward, then I'm probably in the wrong industry. But um, I've just learned that some people just don't have it together there. So that's where we start in learning how to effectively hand clap and applaud ourselves. Wow. Well, the next time you find those people, bring them over to the Motown Barbershop. <laughs> we can use them in the crowd here. You know, you know um, I also found out that you were listed in the Ebony Magazine before. That was during the time I was in Chicago and uh, had the opportunity to meet the late Mr. Johnson, who founded Ebony Magazine. Um, at that time, I was working um, in the financial zone for Neiman Marcus. and. Um, the midwife for uh, Linda Johnson Rice uh, had come in, paid her bill in all cash, and she said, sweetheart, baby, what are you doing behind this counter? You need to be in movies or you need to be in magazines. And I said, really, can you hook me up? And she said, yes, I can. Wow. And I was like, oh yeah, right. You know, you hear all that old stuff before. She says, I'm gonna get you an interview with Mr. Johnson. I said, Mr. Johnson who? She said, the founders of Ebony. I said, really? I said, now if she makes this happen, now this lady will be the first. She called me back two weeks later. She said, baby, meet me downtown on Michigan the Mile. Oh. She says, we're going to meet Mr. Johnson. I said, really? So then she became not just my customer, she became Aunt Emma. Wow. I said, Aunt Emma got the hookup. What? So we go in. You, you still yeah. communicate with her? I, I do on occasion, but she travels a lot. Okay. Yes. Well, you can hook me up. I, I, I sure will. Well. Hey, you need to be in the Ebony. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we can work on that. And um, I walked in because I thought, well, you know, I want to be one of the models. Mm -hmm. And then he looked at me and he said, well, baby, let me be honest. He says, you're a little short and you got a little extra meat on your bones. Mm -hmm. He said, all of my models are six feet, 5'11", mm -hmm. and zero to two. I said, well, no, that ain't me. I said, so put me in with the fashion fair faces. He said, well, I got that one for this year. He said, but um, how about being one of the super singles? I said, no, there's some crazy people out there. He said, no, 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 we'll use it for PR. And this one little picture and these three little sentences, I got over 400 pieces of mail from all over the world. And I have a little special something for you, too. Oh, because really? since this oh, is the right? day, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, right I now? do, right now. No, right now. you absolutely. shouldn't have. Where is it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me see if I can do this. We wanted to present something to you as well. Well, actually, you have to pull it out there. Okay. Okay. This is from our studio to yours. Nice. And we figured every person who has their own TV show needs to have their own brand at Louisville Slugger Baseball Bat. So that can help you protect the key to the city. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and it has my name on it, too. I think I'm getting an idea for another promotional DVD. You know what I mean? <laughs> can I take it to the bridge? Yeah. Hit me.